let's get to the most important guy at the show. This is the boss, Mike Abs. No pressure. Right, right. I mean, this is the guy who's responsible for everything here. If it goes right, it's everybody else's fault. If it goes wrong, it's his. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Mike, I got to tell you, there's an energy and yeah. an excitement and a sense of continuity uh, here that has been missing for the last year, and AEA is alive, and so is the industry. Very much so. I'm thrilled for you and with yeah. you, and we've been watching all this, and you and I have been talking over the last many, many, many months, uh, sometimes through funky little screens and this, that, and the other, and no live nothing, but uh, <laughs> AEA is obviously picking up where Sun and Fun left off. It's a yeah. bang-up show. Yeah. Uh, tell us how the Aircraft Electronics Association and its community have survived a global pandemic. Where do I start? Right? It's, uh, it's, it's. You got 40 minutes. It's unbelievable. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you. Uh, thank you to you and, and Aero News for everything you do for us. Oh, the, coverage, the coverage, the coverage, the help with, with, you know, the show leading up to it, the conversation. Um, we're very thankful. We appreciate it. So, uh, uh, thank you for that. Um, well, I, I think you know that the partnership we have with AEA is our most valued, frankly. Yeah. We've built such a relationship with you and with Apollo's troops before and going all the way back to Monty and the gang, oh, yeah. and God bless. And uh, this is, yeah, Oshkosh is cool and big and crazy and Sun and Fun is cool and big and crazy and AUVSI is cool and big and crazy. It's our favorite. This is our favorite. It's my favorite too. I love all those others. Yeah, but um, they pay you to say that. <laughs> they say they do. Um, we support all those others. In fact, you, you mentioned Sun and Fun. We watched that very closely. Um, that's that was the bellwether for you know in-person return. Yeah. And um, they did a phenomenal job. They, they really they were, did. Just you know, we, we can pick nits on anything. We'll yeah. probably be able to do that here this week. But uh, at the end of the day, the aviation, the general aviation community, is booming. We're soaring. It's stepped We're, up. Yeah, it's fantastic. You know, so the history, a year ago, 13, 14, 15 months ago, um, we stepped in front of a bullet, frankly. We were two weeks out from Nashville, um, you know, ready to meet you guys there. And the next thing you know, we're calling our, our exhibitors and our, and our members and saying, there's no show. And uh, the, the carpet was yanked out from under us. And well, Nashville was shutting down everywhere. It was yeah. awful. I mean, the, the, the city had already survived the tornado the week yeah. before. And, uh, you know, and here we are staring this pandemic down and had no idea it was going to do what it did last summer and into the fall and, and even into this year. Um, but what was interesting, and I think I mentioned this in my opening the other day, is um, the second the official determination that, you know, transportation industry is essential, we did what we always do, and that's just regroup, refocus, figure out um, how to pivot and, uh, and get back to work. And our shops did. And, so we took uh, a couple months to sort of redo that, um, and everybody reevaluated their budgets and waited for other shows to kind of fall uh, as far as um, the trade show business and, and went back to focusing on upgrading aircraft. And I think we recovered in 2020 pretty well. The numbers bear that out. And conversation on the floor will, will bear that out as well. I mean, you talk to these shops and there was a lull for sure. Yeah. Um, some some personnel issues. Not everybody was always healthy. Yeah. So I you're, think, you're, I think the beginning it was just okay. What do we do now? That's it was right. More a sense of confusion than it was yeah. a lack of purpose. Right. Yeah. Everybody wanted to be at work, <laughs> but you're you're dodging the the guidelines and protocols that that are you know smartly introduced to protect yourselves. Trying to figure out your own health risks yeah. and and um, they're making those adjustments. So once that sort of was coordinated, and I would say by the middle of summer they were doing that, um, all of a sudden, people want to upgrade their aircraft, yeah. you know, and, and... Well, now was the time. And now is the time. You, they're, and you, no different than the people sitting at home, working at home, looking at their house, going, I want to upgrade something here. They're focusing on their airplanes and, and their other recreational vehicles. And so, before long, we're back in action. The shops are busy, the, you know, changed a little bit, but the quote activity picked up. and. And the numbers bear that out for the end of 2020. Yeah. So we're really, really fortunate that we have an industry as resilient as it is, essential as it is, for purposes even beyond recreation. I mean, we, you know, there's many things we do in aviation that go beyond just the, the joy of flight, right? And, well, aviation uh, was critical. I mean, how do you think all that vi uh, the antivirals got around? That's right. 
uh, or the, the medical personnel. Uh, aviation was not only a critical industry, it was an industry that was dedicated to participating in solutions. Yep, 100%. E even so, you know, these manufacturers on the show floor are shifting their production to, to helping out with ventilators and face yep. shields and stuff. So it's just, I, I, I can't of. boast enough about our industry um, with regards well, to that. <laughs> How much time do we have? But you um, want more time yeah. for that, you can have it. <laughs> yeah, we'll turn this camera around and focus it on the floor and we'll, we'll find out. But oh, there you go. It's, um, you know, it truly is, uh, it's truly amazing. And we're just, you know, there's many decisions that went into the, to get to this point from our board of directors, our chairman, um, to, to look at what fits our schedule, um, what's going to be allowed from, you know, safety, um, health, health and safety protocols uh, to pull this off. And yes, there's luck, um, but there's also a lot of really intense planning and tremendous support from, you know, our exhibitors and our shops and our, the attendees that are here. And uh, we're so fortunate. We're so pleased. Um, this has been fantastic. Let's, uh, let's shift the conversation a little bit and talk about opening session yesterday yeah, and a hell of an NPR, <laughs> but yeah. also just the overall tone, the people who were there. I mean, we had some serious players uh, and, and all of it was fun. Uh, Dave Salvador's intro to the MPI was cool. Um, of course, he's proud of what he does, and, but it was a sense that led all the way through MPI from there. Yeah. But also uh, between your keynote speaker and some of the other presentations, uh, boy, there was just a sense of determination from moment one. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you wonder when you take two years or, uh, well, two years since your last new product introduction, but a year and a half, um, what's going to get developed in that time. Um, yeah. And so you're curious to see that when we get to 34 companies launching different products. What are we going to see? You know, what's, what have they been working on? And you know that's been happening, right? Um, the engineering probably amped up um, uh, like never before. And, um, well, you know what happens when engineers get bored. Right, and, <laughs> and, and they don't have you know, sales and marketing going to shows, bringing them feedback. They yeah. can really dive into their projects. And so uh, we expected to see that sort of um, energy with the new products, for sure. And, and we saw that, and I think there's more to come. You know, we're, we're, what, four weeks away from, from Oshkosh, and we know some big announcements are coming for that as well. So, and, and to follow on with MBAA. So we're excited. It's, all of those are good. We love when they launch them at our show for the dealers that are here but uh, we love watching them at Oshkosh and MBAA as well, so we're excited. I think it's going to be, it's just going to continue um, that same energy. So. Well, I, I can't disagree with you at all because we've been, since yesterday and today, talking to people, being all over the floor, whether we're chasing down our guest list and everything else, there are people out there proud of to say what they were doing, how they were doing it. Uh, we have asked every single person who's been a guest here today how they were affected by the pandemic and how it changed them as a company. Yeah. And the answers are inspiring because they're not losing the lessons. And even in some cases where they're talking about getting involved and sure. things of that nature. And uh, boy, if you aren't as proud of, as, as Punch in this community, you're just not paying attention. Right, I mean, like, like I said, the resiliency, their ability to shift and, and pivot and, and you know change their businesses, deal with these things, the personnel issues, and the challenges of their own health. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, you know, we're a safety conscious industry first. I mean, we're- Paranoid some, safety conscious some, industry. Right. Um, and, you know, the, we're obviously about cool gadgets and technology, um, but underlying is Paranoid our- Paranoid cool gadgets. <laughs> right. um, but underlying in that is, is uh, you know, um, what's inherent in what we do, and that is safety. Yes. Um, so that was going to be the first thing. And once we figured out, which we do really well, how to adapt, uh, you know, we're back in business. And um, I, I couldn't be more pleased with what I'm seeing on the floor, what I saw yesterday in the new products, um, and what's about to come. I, I'm excited for the industry. And there's other things down the road that we're not even, you know, yet talking about here. Um, well, we'll get to it. We'll, okay. We'll get to it. <laughs> Don't tease me. Okay. <laughs> I thought I might throw that out there in case you were going to oh, skip yeah. that today. Yeah, no, 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 no. Um, you took over AEA just before the you know what hit the fan <laughs> from an exceptional team with exceptional leadership. And Paula, wherever you are out there, we love you and uh, happy retirement and have fun. Uh, sure, miss you. But uh, talk about a trial by fire. Yeah. I mean, yikes. 
Yeah. Can, can, can you get a little bit of uh, the inside baseball experiences from the from the desk on this one? I mean, what do you, Jim? What do you say? You know, the, um, I'm not the only one that experienced this for oh. sure. Um, I, you know, uh, <laughs> if it was just our show, you know, I'd probably have a better story as far as that goes. But uh, there's nothing special here. There's no secret sauce, other than what you said. The team. Yeah. Um, we have a tremendous team. We have experience at every position. Um, decades of experience at every position. So, so I'm the fortunate person that gets to be in front steering that. Yeah. Um, but uh, we have or autopilot. Or the guy who takes the blame. Or that too. That too. <laughs> and you know, I felt like um, with our cancellation, there was there was probably going to be a lot of questions. How is the association going to survive? You know, this is a, a third of our revenue. Mm -hmm. um, it's a big part of our business. We are in the trade show business, um, and we have smaller meetings called Connects throughout the year that we do internationally that are. Um, a very big part of our business as well, and all that shut down. Um, but like everybody else, we looked at the digital options and how we could how we could pivot, and um, we've got that ability in house, um, and we shifted to that. And it, you know, we served our members. Inside baseball, what, what it means to the staff, I, you know, credit to them. Uh, they didn't miss a beat. Um, you know, we we uh, were able to conduct classes. We found out how we could be essential as well, mm -hmm. even as a, you know, a trade association. And so in July, we had, we had to push a few classes back, but we opened our headquarters back up just for classes, figured out a way to keep everybody separated and masked and all that, um, and conducted training through the end of the year. Um, so we were able to supplement some of what we do uh, with that. And so, um, you know, and that leads to people coming to our show. They come to our facility for training, it's world-class technical training in avionics, and they say, what else do you do? And Oh, by the way, we have this trade show or we can incubate your business as a repair station or a manufacturer and they're here, you know, they come, they come to the show. So, uh, yeah, it was, it, there was some, there was some uh, nervous times for sure, but uh, we're resilient. The, the association is healthy. We've taken care of business for a number of years. We've made some smart moves financially. Uh, the board is very akin, uh, tuned into that and um, so, you know, our, we're, we had our rainy day fund and didn't have to take PPP. Mm -hmm. uh, very proud of that. Same um, here. Able to keep everybody on staff, and we we sort of uh, just hunkered down for uh, a year and, and hoped that we could get to this day. And here we are. There you go. Outstanding. How will AEA and the aviation community around you change as a result of the last year? I think there's a few things, and I've had that conversation actually on the show floor. Um, I think the ability to deliver content digitally um, and train and um, yes, <laughs> and and connect with your teams that are you know spread throughout. You've got you know sales reps all over the country. I think we really figured out how to do that, right? Um, maybe to the point where we're all exhausted from it and ready to get back in person. I think that's evident here, but but I think that will stick. Yeah. Um, I don't know that virtual trade shows um, for this particular industry in the way that, that we saw some of them go are going to be anything close to what we're doing today. With They're, all due respect, what I saw was awful. I mean, yeah, compared you, to, you know, yeah. and, and to be truthful, we, aviation did better than most. We saw tra virtual trade shows yeah. for a number of other industries that were abysmal yeah. because the one essential element that people go to a trade show for more than anything else is that one-on-one -on -one question with a person you've been dying to get hold of, to see the product, to put your hands on it, those right. kind of things couldn't be done. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I love the Zoom calls with you. I yeah. do. But this is a this is yeah. a lot better. No, no, no and, question about it. And I think that's the thing. So, so I think there's pieces of that that we learned and we, we like and we figured out. We bought the technology for. We we positioned everybody to to you know be able to do that. And that's great, and, and we're going to do that ourselves. I mean, we, we learned, cut our teeth on some of those things to deliver training, but um, this is proof that this industry has to gather, be in person, shake hands, um, network, and do all of that. So um, there's probably some other things that will come out of it, but uh, I think that's first and foremost, is a nod to how we can use technology to improve our businesses, but still rely on face-to-face. -face. Um, the reason we have business jets, to get you to the customer, um, that doesn't go away, you know, so. Uh, 
And if you're using a business jet, there's a big sale at the other side of that that you do not want to lose. Yeah. So, yeah. there you there. Interesting. The um, <coughs> unmanned and autonomous industries are coming on strong. Mm -hmm. A number of your members are becoming major players and bigger by the day. Yeah. Is AEA equipped to be able to contribute to that speed of progress? Very good question. Very good question. Were you in our board meeting? Well, we have spies everywhere. Um, it's interesting you say that because obviously we've got manufacturers that are working behind the scenes to inject their technology into those airframes. And how many are there? There's, you know, if we're talking autonomy, it's autonomous. Um, yeah. It's and every hundreds. day it's another billion dollar yeah. deal. Right. Of course, you know, ninety percent of them never happen, but it's a ten percent that does that, that's going to change want, the world. And you want to be a part of it, right? So, I think um, oh boy, howdy. I think there is definite you know buzz in the industry about this. Um, there's interest from the association, from our members. Um, you know, the unmanned side we're we're, we're tapped into. Um, obviously, there's a network of, of our members that are already exposed to that. Um, uh, advanced air mobility and sort of what's going on there. I think from the manufacturing side, sure. Operationally, not for us yet. Uh, however, um, we talk about these boxes that are going to be going in these these airframes, and it's technology we're familiar with. You see, well, you saw some introduction yesterday yep. of of trickle down, a flow down technology from some of those projects. So yeah, we're we're up to speed on that. Um, I think uh, we've got a few years before we're truly exposed to the maintenance side of it. Uh, so we're wait and see on some of it. Uh, from, a, from a staff standpoint, um, an expertise standpoint, yeah, we're going to have to evaluate what we can do to, to really bring those folks in um, you know, to this community. But it's going to happen. It's going to be fascinating stuff. Uh, we're looking forward to right after, <laughs> thankfully, just yet another addition to the schedule, but right after Oshkosh is Atlanta and AUVSI. Yeah. And I have to tell you, uh, as you know, we produce AUVSI's Airborne Unmanned uh, news program every week. And so we're keyed into a lot of those folks and what's going on and some of the things that are coming up as AUVSI is getting out of the virtual and getting back into the one-on-one -on -one world. But there's going to be some news made. And more important, yeah. the thing that we've learned about the unmanned community, it's not just a technical revolution, it's a social one how we do things, who does what, uh, becomes just part of our everyday life's experience. So it's going to be wild to watch. Yeah, we're excited. I think this is, you know, we talk about the next generation uh, of people, um, technicians, pilots. Uh, I think that's where the real promise for that is. I think that's, aviation's always had an appeal, right? Mm -hmm. We've, you know, but, but we've lived off of that fat for my entire career and many years before that, just you know the the sound, looking up in the sky, all of that. But this is different, um, and it's it's cool. And I think that you know unmanned helped significantly, and we'll continue to do that. Um, advanced air mobility will be another one because you know you potentially see it a little more closer to home, um, and maybe in in, in um, higher frequency. It's going to it's going to create interest. And, and big tech is in it, big money's in it. Very big um, money, and, and there's about to be a lot more very big money. Right, and they have the ability to attract you know, this next generation of talent. They do it in, on the software and engineering side already. Um, I think we benefit from that no matter what happens. Absolutely, so. Uh, It'll be interesting to look at this floor in five years. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be fun. Yeah. That's one of the cool things about all the stuff we've done live over the years, we get a chance to go look back 10 now 12 years yeah. and see some of the things that were exciting at the time versus where we are right now. It's kind of a real interesting lesson in the history book. It's amazing how fast it advances. Yeah. And it I'm really so glad is. we have all that because at some point what'll be fun is just doing a historical compendium of this industry. Maybe by the time we get to year 20, we'll have to put Nathan to work and just <laughs> jam through and really. see what's a really look back. Yeah, it'd be I mean it's fun. it's amazing. We we were so fortunate because I mean I think I've said it to you before, we have the coolest piece of this pie. I mean, yeah. this is this is where all the cool stuff happens. It's where all the cool stuff happens. Um, no discount to what's going on in the airframe world. There's some pretty exciting things. Oh, let's yeah. be honest. But but the, you see the tangible change with the equipment and the technology here. Um, and it, you know, you 
now you're starting to see AI and virtual reality really play into it, and it's it's truly impressive. Um, and it, you're just going to see that infiltrate the whole show floor. Let me suggest another switch here. You cannot walk through an aviation event and not notice that it's the world's greatest collection of old white guys. <laughs> True. Yeah, me, me prominently. Uh, at Oshkosh, we've started seeing more families. We've yeah. started seeing more people of color, but it's and more women. It's certainly not enough. Are we being as properly, not crazily, but properly attentive to building an industry that reflects the re rest of the world or is there other things we can do? Yeah, I, th I'm, I think we're saying it for the first time in a while. I mean, it, yeah. we've kind of talked about that, um, but the trick is doing it. Are we doing something? Um, and we've got our work cut out for us there as well. I think uh, you're right. I'm encouraged by what I'm seeing on the show floor yeah. because it is certainly diverse. Um, and there's, maybe it's just me getting older. A lot more people seem younger. <laughs> Uh, there's some young faces out here, and they're energized yeah. about what we're doing, um, and they're excited about it. But yeah, we've got a lot more work, and we're uh, fortunate to, to have uh, Allison McKay from Women in Aviation, who's here. And we were kind of talking about that last night at our event, uh, about some of the things we can work on together. So there's good synergies there. Um, we just have more to do, for sure. I hear you. Yeah, it is a problem. What do you see right now? If, if if you pulled out the official AEA crystal ball, the one I know Paula gave you when she yeah, left. she handed it the off. The lower right, right hand drawer? Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, where's the storms? Where's the trouble? Where are the things that have the potential to keep you up at night? What do we need to be looking for in order to avoid... This all over again? <laughs> well, not, not, you know, yeah. I, I think the pandemic scenario was something yeah. that can't possibly repeat because we just lived it and nobody's going to allow anything like that again and we certainly learned a few things from it but I mean what where are the trouble spots ahead for the aviation community at what point are we going to run into something that's really going to tax us got any ideas yeah I, there's probably you know there's there's things that are more in front of us from a supply chain standpoint the, some of the obvious things supply uh, chains come up quite a bit today yeah um, so that's an easy answer, Jim. I, uh, down the road, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we'll continue to have this workforce discussion. I think we'll continue to have the, uh, uh, the diversity discussions and those things. But I don't know that those are choke points for, for what we just experienced. Um, I will say, whatever it is, um, and I'm, I'm not going to you know, look too deep into that crystal ball yeah. um, and try and foretell that. But you might actually see something. Yeah, really yeah. <laughs> uh, I will say this. After this last year, we're more ready for it than we've ever been. Oh, and of I course. Think, I think the gut check from that um, has us looking at our business, yep. um, evaluating, um, what we're, focusing on what we do well, um, and deciding, uh, you know, how to how to do better in the future. And I think a lot of people took a really good look at their business this last year and are better positioned for it. Um, well, we did. Yeah. Well, um, at yeah. Hattie, we are totally different than we yeah. were. You're more nimble. You're more Big agile. Time. Um, you adapt to trends, yep. and and, and the, you know, so you have. We a were radical ball. to begin with. We're about oh, yeah. to radical ourselves, and it's, yeah. and to be truthful, we, I hate to say it, and, and good people suffer, but we got a kick in the you know what, yeah. and we needed it, yeah, and it changes everything. Yeah, I think you know, the other thing is, is if you were to look at something and, and sort of guess on that, it's going to change before the end of the year. Yeah, you know, this they, it moves so fast yeah. now. Um, what you think is a thing today could be a non-issue in, yeah. in six to nine months. So I think, you know, regulatory landscape, it's pretty quiet. Okay. You'll talk to Rick. He'll explain what's going on in that, in that landscape. But it oh, is we're going to grill Rick. Uh, I mean, come on. Let me take it easy on him. He's... No, 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 <laughs> he, uh, no, 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 But I think he'd tell you there's things going on, and, they're, and the, you know, the administration's been very supportive of, of this environment. Yeah. Um, they supported us this morning in our meetings. Um, you know, even from headquarters, which is fantastic. Okay. Uh, but it is quieter, um, so we'll see how that translates. There's going to be issues um, that, that change. One of the things we're wondering about is just how radical the change is going to be yeah. at FAA as a result of this. Yeah. Because our inside friends indicate that uh, it's going to be radical, that yeah. it will be significant, and that. Uh, they learned a lot of things they could do that they didn't think they could do, and right. they're happy with that. 
but there's a whole lot of stuff that didn't go well, and they're really scratching their head right now. Yeah. So changes will come. How do you work in a resource-constrained environment, yep. right, with a room full of experts with that line are- With budgets. With, with expertise and the technology that's coming at you that changes so rapidly, you're behind the curve on what they brought to you last year. Yeah. And that's not a that's not a, a, a knock on um, their knowledge, skills, and abilities. No, that's just how fast it changes. That's just, yeah. yeah, that's just part of it. So, Politics is, is normal. Yeah. So there's a th that intersection will be interesting to watch. I'll be darned. The NPIs you watched yesterday. What trends do you see? What technologies are the ones that you think we are all going to really need to watch? Well, I mean, I think if you're looking ahead, uh, I think we talked about it a little bit with uh, autonomous. Yeah. The, the, the flow out of that research and development to you know, useful technologies today, um, connectivities even today, uh, are I think the space to watch. And then you know, add into that machine learning, AI, virtual, um, when we do get these chips, yeah. <laughs> oops, <laughs> that that you know a, allow the you know computing beyond what we can even imagine, I think you're just going to see exponential growth in these systems that that of course make it you know easier and safer to fly, but reduce pilot workload, um, more affordable options for for you know everything down to you know the home built, um, where a lot of really innovative technology put, takes place, and you're seeing that you know our shops are focusing on that uh, mm -hmm. as well, so. Um, just an expansion from both sides of the market up up to uh, um, transport category and what's going on there as well. So uh, I'm excited. Two final questions. Okay. Um, what will AEA itself look like in a couple of years? All circumstances withstanding. And tell me a little bit about AEA Convention 2022 in New Orleans. Okay. Um, so you might have heard me mention we're on a strategic plan, yeah. right? Um, and we're, we're a prolonged one because we started it during a pandemic. Thankfully, we didn't finish it before a pandemic because we'd be redoing it. Yeah. Um, but Oops. yeah, next we're, plan. <laughs> exactly. So we're a couple phases into that, and we're really gathering good feedback and, and focusing on that with special committees and whatnot that that are that are making recommendations to the board. Uh, but I talked about earlier, we have. We have a pretty good formula, right? There's yep. a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yep. So we're very, very aware of, of, of this and how well it works. Um, at the same time, we know there's a lot of things coming up that we've got to be positioned for from a staff standpoint, um, from a technology standpoint, that, that we've got to get ready for. So we're, we're walking a fine line here um, to not reinvent ourselves, but revolutionize ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, or, Maybe even evolutionize ourselves. Probably a better term because it's just Agreed. it's just an evolving. It's not a it's not a complete redo. Um, but that's important. That's going to be a big thing for us. And that's you know Gary, who can't be here, he yeah. sends his regrets. Um, would tell you that this is part of his you know this is uh, his legacy. His chairmanship ends in, in New Orleans, and um, he wants to have this strategic plan um, pressed and printed and final by the time he hands the gavel off. Um, so when we get to New Orleans, will there be new leadership on that standpoint? Uh, and uh, I think you'll see a lot of this. I think we'll still be looking to reconnect. Uh, there's going to be some folks that weren't here. We'll get our international contingent back, I hope. Um, That'll be wonderful. Uh, it'll be tremendous. And, and we miss them. Uh, this, sure the, the energy around this show feeds off of all continents, um, but in particular, um, our international attendees. They, they bring an energy that's like no one, no one else, and we miss them. I mean, you can tell, um, and we talk about them. They're on the show floor. You know, so well, we really miss Trig and their bottle of scotch yeah. at the end of the show. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, it's, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, spoke with Andy before, and he was he was ready to come, yeah. uh, but uh, you know, obviously couldn't. And and you know, they've got uh, a distributor that's supporting them, which is great, and they're able to do that. So uh, we miss them, um, and I think that's that's the part of New Orleans. If everything else stays the same, yeah. Technology changes, of course. If everything else stays the same and we're add we're adding back our international attendees we're in great shape and new orleans is a great location a for this spot. show we had yeah. a ball last it's a good time spot. yeah serious good time yeah so okay here's your chance to get back at me 
Okay. What question didn't I ask that you wanted to answer? <laughs> well, I mean, I think you covered it. I, I think Ooh, uh, snowed you. I think actually, <laughs> what you didn't ask. Okay. I actually I came stopped by the, uh, the registration desk before you got here. I thought you were going to hit me up with the numbers question. Well, not uh, to the end, but go okay. for it. Um, How's it look? Well, so and I think it's important. Since to, you mentioned it, right? Well, I think the thing is, is it, we're not a show that you know tens of thousands through the turnstile. You know, that's not that's not who we are. This is business to business. This is manufacturers, dealers, distributors, educators. You know, it's a, it's a different it's a different focus, right? Um, but Dallas is usually our record city. And it's really, it is. Okay. And uh, I think if you go back to 05, when we were doing some repair station rewrites and the economy was booming, we had some pretty good years. Um, 1,800 as far as attendance goes. When we left for um, Dallas this year, uh, we were in line with our numbers for Vegas, um, sort of Nashville. I mean, we had international in there. You factor that out. But we're in line with 16, 17, and 18. Um, so we're very pleased. We're going to be over 1,400. Um, we'll, we'll probably report slightly higher than that at the end of it because uh, we're still taking registrations, you know, today, tomorrow, through Friday. Um, but well, Crystal works under several names, so you can probably get her three or four times on the roster. Yeah, well, that, there's, there's some of that. Okay, um, good. So, and we're aware of that, but uh, yeah, so we're just excited by the fact that we've met and ex exceeded our expectations. Excellent. Um, if you added in the international, we'd be really blown away. So um, really, really happy with that. And just thankful for the folks that, that did make it and supported the industry and um, supported the AEA. Well, if I can say so, this is a record show. You guys have come back from horrible circumstances in an industry that got clobbered, that had to figure its way through all kinds of minefields. And the fact that everybody is here who can be and is doing business and working well and reporting positive results. If that's not record territory, what is? Right. So we'll take there it. you go. Yeah. Mike, as always, we appreciate your time and uh, more important, your insights. You've been great to consult with over the last couple of years and staying on top of the things that are important, not just to AEA and the relationship we have with you as we work with you, but obviously through the community. But uh, and in the long run, I got to tell you, uh, Paula was a very tough act to follow, but I think you're doing a heck of a job. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thanks, Jim, for everything. Thank you so much. Yeah. Aero News Network's coverage of the 64th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from Dallas, Texas, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors.